Welcome back to All This Math. This is Professor Parker. And for this lesson, we're going to multiply decimals. We're going to be multiplying decimals. But it's actually, we're not just going to multiply these two decimals, these two decimal factors, and come up with a product. What we're actually going to talk about is a way to figure out where the decimal point should go once you complete the multiplication and the addition of the two different products, the partial products. In the event that if you're a young person watching this, that you forget the process or the trick to knowing where to put the decimal point in your final answer, or if you're a parent or grandparent, whoever, caregiver, uncle, aunt, whoever, um, trying to help your child to figure, be able to figure out where the decimal point should go if they forget the process for it, right? Because there's other ways to figure it out. Um, and I think this is, a pretty, this is a pretty cool concept because this is something that I saw when... Um, Cause I teach a class at Cheney. I teach a math methods class at Cheney where I'm basically teaching education majors how to understand what many people call the new math, right? And the new math is not bad, you know, or for some of us it's new, for some of us it's old, for some of us um, we were exposed to it when we were younger, some of us weren't exposed to it when we were younger, right? But um, the textbook that I use talked about this, this skill that we can teach the children. So in the event that they forget the steps to knowing where to put the, de the decimal point in the final answer, they can still figure it out just from doing basic, some, some basic multiplication and, and using some, some critical thinking. Because that's what math is about. Math is about critical thinking. All right. And while I'm at it, this is my, uh, let me give a, a shout out to uh, one of our ancestors, Frederick Douglass, the late Frederick Douglass. This is one of his quotes. Knowledge makes you unfit to be a slave, which is basically one of the reasons why I started this YouTube channel that I hope everybody subscribes to because I want people to have knowledge of math. With knowledge of math, you'll have knowledge of, you have the ability to think critically, reason analytically, understand consequential thinking and apply consequential thinking and also be able to problem solve, right? And then hopefully you will not be able to be enslaved, you know, because you'll know enough in order to maintain and, you know, keep your freedom. So at any rate, uh, shout out to Frederick Douglass. And if you're not as familiar with Frederick Douglass, please go do some research on Frederick Douglass. Either read some, some biographical information on him or read one of his own three autobiographies, right? The Narrative of Frederick Douglass, which he released, I believe, in 1845. Um, uh, 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 my Bondage and My Freedom, which was his second autobiography, which came out, I think, I want to say like 20 years later. I used to know the dates, but I forgot. I think um, Life and Times of Frederick Douglass was the last autobiography he wrote. That's the, the longest one. I want to say that came out in like 1878, maybe? Eh, 1877, something like that. But at any rate, um, make sure you're familiar with Frederick Douglass, his work, his writings, his history, some of his thoughts and ideas, his theories. He was a, he was a theoretician, an abolitionist. Very important brother. All right. So at any rate, 1.37 times 3.6. Let's get into this. So the way I would do this, I'm a, I'm a, there are many ways we could multiply this. We can multiply these two numbers, right? But multiplication got a lot of options. And parents, don't shy away from different methods of multiplying decimals. Don't do that. That does your children a disservice. I'm trying to tell you, right? Embrace the, the variety. Embrace the options. All right? So but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the standard algorithm that a lot of us learned 30 years ago when we was in elementary school ourselves. All right? So... The number with, with the more digits, I'm going to put that on top. So this has three digits, one, two, three. This has two digits. I'm going to put that on the bottom. So I'm going to do 1.37 and then 3.6. And I'm not adding or subtracting, so I'm not going to line the numbers up according to um, place value. I'm not. I'm just going to have um, the 6 is going to go into the 7, and the 3 is going to go into this 3. So I'm not lining the numbers up according to place value or according to the decimal point. I'm not doing that. So 3.6, boom. So I'm going to do take this 6, multiply by everything up here. Then I'm going to take this 3, multiply by everything up here. So first I do 6 times 7. And also, parents, make sure you have your multiplication facts memorized. Make sure your children have their multiplication facts memorized. All right? If y'all don't have them memorized, you can memorize them together. And it's the summertime. So you got time. Well, even if you don't got time, make time. All right, because it's that important. Six times seven is 42. So we're going to take this, take the two from the 42, right? And under the six, we're going to take the four, carry it to the 
next place value. So we're going to do 6 times 3, that's 18. We're going to do 18 plus 4, which is 22. So we write the 2 from the 1's place, and then put that 2 up here. Then we're going to do 6 times 1, which is 6. 6 plus 2 is going to be 8. We got 822. Now, we go to the 3. 3 times 7 is 21. We put the 1. Now, why do I indent? Everybody probably remembers, oh yeah, you got to indent when you multiply, when you get to the second digit. Why do you got to indent? You got to indent because we're essentially multiplying this 7 by a number that is 10 times bigger than this 6. So because this 3 is 10 times bigger than this 6, the product we get is going to be 10 times bigger than the products we already got. Let me say that again, because it's very important for us to understand why we do things in math. It's great to memorize algorithms. It's great to memorize the steps. That's what you should do. But in addition to that, or what should accompany that, is you understanding why the algorithm works, why it makes sense, and why you do it. Again, the reason that we indent one space, and some teachers tell children to write a zero here. That's fine, too. But you should also know, well, if your teacher tells you to write a zero here, why is there a zero here? Why? Because when we multiply this 3 times 7, that product is 10 times as big as six, what 6 times 7 was, right? 10 times as big, all right? So because it's in, the, it's in the place value to the left, this was the tenths place. This 6 is in the tenths place. This 3 is in the ones place. One, the ones place is 10 times bigger than the tenths place. Again, the ones place is 10 times bigger than the tenths place. So because of that, our product must be 10 times bigger. So that's why we shift to the left. We get 10 times bigger when we shift to the left. Again, we get 10 times bigger when we shift to the left. So that's why you don't write the 1 right under the 2. Because 6 times 7 is 42, right? But that's 0. 0.6 times 7, right? This is a 3. This is in a 1's place now. So we're 10 times bigger. So because we're 10 times bigger, in order to show that, we shift to the left one space. All right? Make sure you understand that. All right. So now, 3 times 7 is 21. Write the 1, carry the 2. Where's the 2 going to go? Where this 4 is. Now, this 4 and this 2, we already used that. Actually, what I recommend, the numbers that you carry, I would cross them out once you use them. We used them already. We used the 4 and the 2 already. We don't need them no more. We can cross them out. All right? So now, again, 3 times 7 was 21. I put the 1 down here. I carry the 2. The 2 is up here now. Then I do 3 times 3. That's 9. What's 9 plus 2? 11. You write the 1. Then you carry the 1. Then we do 3 times 1. That's 3 plus 1. It's going to be a 4. Then we draw a line. And then we add. And then we do 2 plus 0, which is 2. 2 plus 1, which is 3. 8 plus 1, which is 9. Nothing plus 4, or 0 plus 4, a blank space represents 0, is 4. Now, there's a step that you use in order to know where to put the decimal point. But imagine your child your grandchild, your niece, your nephew, whoever, forgot what that step was. This is what the textbook was breaking down. They said, listen, this is what they could do. Go back to the original two products. Think about what two whole numbers, because they're decimals, what two whole numbers are those two, are those two factors or those two numbers in between? So 1.37, let me see, is in between, how did I have this written on my paper? I wrote it a certain way that was that I thought was decent. Um, oh, okay. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. One and two. One point three seven is in between one and two, right? Three point six is in between three and four. So let's just think about that for a minute. One point three seven is one of our numbers from our multiplication problem. It's in between one and two. 3.6 is in between 3 and 4, right? So, if we weren't multiplying decimals and we was multiplying whole numbers instead, let's say we was doing 1 times 3. 1 times 3 is 3, right? Let's say we was doing 2 times 4. 2 times 4 is 8. Now, because 1.37 is in between 1 and 2, then the product when you multiply, so the next whole number, the whole number below 1.37 would be 1. The whole number above 1.37 would be 2. So, and the same thing with 3.6. 3.6 is 
the whole number less than 3.6 is 3. The whole number greater than 3.6 is 4. So doing 1 times 3 would give us 3. Doing 2 times 4 would give us 8. So between 3 and 8 is the range of where the, where the product would have to be. The product between 1.37 and 3.6 would have to be between 3 and 8. It would have to be. Mathematically speaking, it must be between 3 and 8. So if I know that it must be between 3 and 8, and I forgot the step to know where to put the decimal point in this number, I could say, well, I know that if the decimal point was here, at the end, it would be 4,932. And I know that's wrong because that's not between 3 and 8. But what if I said, well, what if I put it between the 3 and 2? 493.2. That's wrong because that's not between 3 and 8. Then what if I put it between the 9 and the 3? That's also wrong because that's not between 3 and 8. But then if I put it between the 4 and 9, 4.932. That's between 3 and 8. That's between 3 and 8. So this would be the answer. If you forgot the step. Now here's the step. The step is... In order to know where to place the decimal point, you go back to the original factors. Multiplication, multiplier, right? And you count up how many digits are to the right of the decimal point in each of these numbers. How many digits, how many digits to the right of the decimal point in 1.37? 1, 2. How many digits to the right in 3.6? 1. How many digits all together are to the right of the decimal points in both of these numbers? 1, 2, 3. So that means that in our product, there should be the same number of digits to the right of the decimal point. One, two, three. That's the step. But there's so many steps that you learn in math, right? And in any, any type of math problem, there's so many steps you learn. It's, you're likely to forget. You might forget. We're human. Your children are human. They might forget. But if they do forget, they can kind of they can still figure out where the decimal point should go by thinking about. The concept of numbers like this involves number sense like i know if i'm multiplying two decimals i got to get a number that's between three and eight the, these two decimals it's got my product has got to be between three and eight because think about the whole numbers that 1.37 is in between one and two and 3.6 is between three and four so then we dealing with so then we between three and eight you know so we got to be between three and eight and if we're between three and eight we can't be it can't be four thousand nine hundred thirty two it can't be 493.2. It can't be 49.32. It can't be, it's got to be 4.932. That's the only option that's between. And actually, I left one out. It can't be, it can't be 0. 0.4932. Because that's less than three. That's not between three and eight. It's not. So, just something to think about, right? Um, just, this, it's, it's a math trick, right? In case you forget, the process, how to know where to put the decimal point, you can still figure it out by thinking about the whole numbers. What whole numbers are the two factors in between if you're dealing with a decimal? All right, so get some practice with that. I'll see you all in the next video. Shout out to Frederick Douglass.